Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Thanks so much, Marty. Even though uh, Marty didn't actually give me the haircut today, um, the fact is he gave me a good enough haircut that I can live today, show my hair, and not wear the usual baseball cap to cover up. Anyway, uh, Marty Levinson, thanks so much. And I want to welcome all of you to the Northtown News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. The show is brought to you in part by Lund Gardens Condominium. We want to thank you so much um, for the sponsorship. And um, thanks again to my entire technical crew, Sonny Hirsch. I want to urge all of you to go to his website at caps24.org. In his spare time, Sonny is the chairman of the district advisory committee and urge all of you to go to the caps meetings. There's a list of every single caps meeting in the neighborhood at caps24.org. Our show's website will flash throughout, but you know what? I want to get down to business. Um, it is a privilege to have one of the most distinguished people in the state of Illinois, a very distinguished um, elected official for many years who, who's this, who does a lot of good things that you're definitely going to recognize and be familiar with, and um, somebody who really has stayed out of controversy for being an elected official. It's unbelievable. I, I don't know how you do that, but it is my pleasure to welcome the Secretary of State of Illinois, Jesse White. How are you? It'll be nice to see you. First of all, my pleasure, and thank you, and thank you so much for being here. Glad to be here always. And it's, it's, it's really great to have you. There's so many things. Now, let's, you know what? We should really talk about It's an election year. We could, we could, it, there's so many things that you've done during the course of the last three and a half years to change the way the office is run. Not just lip service or whatever, but I mean, you really, you've really, you know, you came in there, you came in with the plan. You decided there's ways things can can be changed, modernized, be more effective. I mean, let's let's talk about some of the stuff you've done that way. First of all, when I came into the office in 1999, I said that I wanted to run the office like it as a business, restore some integrity to it, and put it in a posture by which people could be proud. And uh, we've been able to fulfill every uh, campaign commitment. Normally, when you're out on the campaign trail, you say you want to do certain things, you want to accomplish certain things, and you fall quite a bit short, but in this case, there was so much to be done. The General Assembly was kind enough to help us to do some of the things that we needed to do to move the Office of the Secretary of State forward. Which I think is really terrific. I mean, there's so many different things you did to, to make life easier for both the citizens and save costs. I think it's absolutely been great. Well, one of the things that we did, when I came to this office, uh, I came into the office when the office was on a cloud of controversy. There were about 3,000 individuals who had received driver's license, their driver's license, or a, a, a CDL, commercial driver's license, which mean, meant that they would be able to drive a truck. And we were told that uh, some of these people had gotten their license under questionable circumstances. So we did some retesting, and in the process of retesting these 3,000 individuals, we found out I think just 40% just were able to pass the retest, which meant that the roads of Illinois were not safe. And so we just wanted to do all we could to make sure we got rid of those individuals so that uh, the roads would be a lot safer, they're a lot safer now than they were then. I also brought on a fellow by the name of Jim Burns. Jim Burns was a, for, was a former U.S. attorney from the Northern District of Illinois. I brought him on, and uh, he's my inspector general. And I'm commi our mission is to make sure that any time anyone is in violation of the code of conduct set forth by this administration, they could be suspended terminated or incarcerated, all of the above, and so we're proud to have him on board. Well, we uh, also dealt with putting forward uh, the delivery of 8.5 million sets of license plates. That's the largest in the history of the state. It's the largest in the history of this country. No other state has ever embarked upon the manufacturing and distribution of that many license plates. We used to have the orange stick in the rear windows of cars. Right. It's called a TRP, Temporary Registration Permit, and that permit is an advisory. It lets law enforcement know that your plates are being made and that uh, after the expiration date, of course, then would let them know that you would then have your license based prior to the expiration date of that placard. We found out that about 250,000 were illegal 
They made themselves, computer generated it, bought them off the streets. People were doing it not, on their own. Then they could not track them. And so we sat down as a part of my campaign pledge to devise a license plate that is foolproof, counterfeit proof, tamper proof. The yellow one that's out there now is the only one of its kind in the nation. It will let law enforcement know, no matter where they are, that, uh, the, you know, to let you know the name of the person or the owner of the person and the pertinent information that they'll need in order to uh, go about their business with regard to that particular vehicle. You know, have you been in that situation? And I want to give you credit for that because, you know, I'd see people with, with that temporary tag in the back of their window, and it would be there for years. Yes. <laughs> And, and, and you, when you think about $250,000 is lost in the state of Illinois because of uh, the illegal use of the placard, consider the fact, too, that there was not a tracking device. You never knew who the owner was. And um, we just wanted to make sure that we got a handle on that. And then there was something else that we did, too. Uh, when I came to the office, I used to pass out those disability placards like you'd pass out candy, give them out to individuals who were not uh, disabled individuals. Mm -hmm. So we devised three placards three kinds of placards. Mm. The red placard indicated that you have a temporary disability. The blue one indicated that uh, you had a temp had a permanent disability. And then you had the green placard, which would let law, law enforcement know that you are authorized to transport individuals who are disabled. Oh, interesting, because you know what? My, my mother, my, I wasn't transporting my mom. Well, you were just becoming Secretary of State when my mom passed away. So I used to deal with, with that exactly, yeah. And so we also became a, a little bit more sophisticated. We, all, we punched holes into the material that would let law enforcement know the age of the person, the sex of the person. Oh, wow. Well, let me tell you how, how it works. You got a little, you have a 25 year old young man who's mm -hmm. parking in downtown Chicago, and he takes the plaque and he puts it above the rear view mirror where mm -hmm. you're, you're supposed to fix it when you're getting out of the car, but you're not supposed to drive down the street with it, but only display it when you're getting out of the car. And the officer says, Young man, uh, may I see your license? He said, oh, you're 25 years of age? Yes, officer. Um, is that your placard? He said, yes, officer, that's that's my placard. He says, no, young man, that's not your placard because you're not 89 years of age and you're, and you're, not, and you're, not, a, and you're not a female. So that information is, and then there's also wow. an, identif has an identification number there as well. And then we are involved with, uh, our Secretary of State Police is involved with monitoring the athletic arenas because many times, uh, these young people will get someone else's placard. Park, oh, get a handicapped park. spot. Yeah. They, that's right, close to the entrance to the arena, run into the, the game, watch it, and run back out and get in that car and drive away. Well, we've been relentless in efforts to incarcerate, not so much incarcerate, but to give tickets to those individuals who are caught using someone else's placard. Before, the fine used to be $100. Now it's $500. And we could possibly suspend your license. And then if by chance you get caught manufacturing or altering a plate, it's a thousand dollars. And if by chance you happen to park in a space that has been set aside for someone who is disabled, the fine used to be a hundred dollars, it's three hundred and fifty dollars now. So we're involved with what is called tough love. Mm -hmm. That's so, good. I so, like that. So right here in this neighborhood, about six months ago, there were there was an automobile accident took place where you had four uh, individuals who were 16 years of age. The state representative, D'Amico, came to me and asked would I support him in his efforts to change the driving age from 16 to 18. I says, no, I cannot support you with that. And he told me the story about these four 16-year-old kids who were involved in this accident. Two were deceased and two are still recovering from their wounds. And so the, the fathers met, the city fathers of Lincolnwood met, and they gave him marching orders to go to Springfield to change the driving age from 16 to 18. And I said to him, I could not help him help you with changing the, the, the age uh, from 16 to 18. However, we have what is called the graduated driver's license, which means that the family, the mother or the father, would have to spend 25 hours behind the wheel with the child before they can get the license. Mm -hmm. And so I said, we can improve upon that by doubling the period of time from 50 hours to from 25 hours to 50 hours and 10 of the 50 hours would be done at night and this way we think that through, through practicing uh, with your f family members we're going to get a better product the bill was introduced by the into the Illinois General Assembly by Representative D'Amico in the House 
Senator Cullen in, in the Senate. It was passed and signed by the governor. And now, starting on June the 22nd of this year, anyone who takes part in driver's ed, they would be required to have their parents to spend 50 hours behind the wheel with them. Wow. Uh, before they get their license. And as I said before, 10 of the 50 hours must be at night. It's a violation of all laws of human decency for a parent to say, I spent 50 hours behind the wheel with my child. And so if something happened to have happened to that child or someone else, you know, shame on the parents for fudging on the number of hours that they were really required to spend with their loved one. And so we're proud of the fact that uh, we have enough confidence in our 16-year-olds to be able to handle themselves behind the wheel. We did something else, too, that uh, I should share with you. Illinois leads the nation in the area of organ donation. We have six million plus individuals who signed to become organ donors. 5,000 people on the waiting list as we speak. 300 people die each year because the organs have not arrived in a timely fashion. We believe that when you're alive and well, you should give blood. You're no longer here, you should give organs. One person can provide life or improve the quality of life for 25 individuals. We used to ask individuals who would come into our facility, our 136 Secretary of State facilities, seeking their driver's license, stickers, state IDs, or whatever the case may be. Would you like to become an organ donor? If you say yes, we used to ask you to sign on the back of your driver's license, have two individuals sign on as witnesses, and then talk over with your family members so when that moment arrived, there would be a smooth transition. We found that 20% of the family members, because of the stress of the moment, or because of the thought of losing their loved one, they opted out of the system. So they would not let their loved one's organs be used for transplantation purposes. 20% of the people who had to commit themselves to becoming an organ donor, their wish was not honored. So we have a new program that started in January. We have about five questions, your name, address, city, zip code, and your driver's license number or your state ID. When you fill that form out, then you become a part of our new organ donor registry, which means that if something happened to you, your organs could be used for transplantation purposes over and above the objection of your family members. So therefore, your wishes really do get filled out. We want your wish to be honored. And so right now, since January, we've had over 800,000 people to sign up mm. for a new program. So now we have two programs at play here. We have the old system whereby we have to consult with your family members. The new system, we will not have to consult with your family members. Let me share with you a couple of quick stories. I was out in New Lakes, Illinois, mm -hmm. where the teacher was honored because she gave her student her kidney. I was at Loyola Memorial Hospital, and the doctor gave her patient mm -hmm. a kidney. I was reading about a doctor, in, I think it was in Pennsylvania. He had old positive blood. The old positive blood supply had been used up, and he was operating on his patient, and he was the only one who had that type blood. So he went next to a head, the blood extracted from his body, was inserted into his patient's body, and as it turned out, he completed his operation. The person is alive and well as a result of his generosity. One of my former tumblers was shot and killed at the Ford City Theater in mm. the Ford City Mall about three months ago. And six of his organs were used for transplantation purposes. So now six people are living as a result of his family's generosity. So yeah, there's a lot terrific. to be said about organ donation. Yeah, I know that uh, this is a big subject for you. As a matter of fact, I was uh, the, the last time I had you on before the last election, you really surprised me with, with how impassioned you were about it. And uh, I guess there's some family history there also. Yeah, yes, I had a brother who was a pharmacist at the Lakes IV Hospital and wasn't mm -hmm. feeling well. And so we took him to the doctor. The doctor examined him and said, oh, he's suffering from an aneurysm. We have to get him to the hospital right away. Got to, we took him to the hospital. They put him on life support. And the night before he passed away, a member from the Regional Organ Bank of Illinois asked if by chance he happens to pass away, can we use his organs for transplantation purposes? I says, no, but don't bother me, don't bother us. Leave us alone. I was on the weather program at the time. Mm -hmm. He died, passed away that night, and a few days later we buried him. And then thinking more of that situation until two years later, my sister became ill and was in dire need of a kidney. There was not a match within the family. 
And so she put her name on the list, and sure enough, she got a second chance in life as a result of someone else's generosity. And so I've become a strong believer in the Oregon Donor Program because it works. And right. so I gave you some examples a few moments ago of how it truly works. No, it definitely. There's no question about it. Um, you know, one of the things I want to let people know, because, you know, people see you publicly and you see you on the camera and, you know, we, we were kind of kibitzing before joking around and, you know, the camera goes on, though, you know, you're talking to the voters, it's election time, so it's time to talk about issues and talk about seriousness. But I, I, I want to give people some idea that, you know, this is really a nice guy. I mean, a good human being. Give me, I'll give you guys an example. We were filming the Illinois Information, the Illinois Integrated Justice Information Summit which, uh, you know, with Dor you know we, we're, we're, we're very friendly with Dorothy Brown's people, and they're the ones who got us involved in it, Sonny and I. And um, the Secretary of State was the keynote speaker for that particular event. So um, we were going to, so Sonny and I were filming the event, and we were up on a podium to film the speaker stand. Now, um, the sec we had to interview the Secretary of State first because we were going to film the whole summit, and that was the only chance to interview him without, you know, breaking into the summit. So we started up on the podium, and we saw that, you know, this isn't going to work, not for an individual interview, because we're up on the podium, so we can get a good long-range shot. So we realized we've got to move everything down to the floor. So the next thing you know, it's like, like he's busy carrying all the heavy equipment. <laughs> he doesn't have to do that, but he's grabbing the, the heavy, the, all the heavy stuff and uh, helping us lift it down. I mean, he's, he's a genuinely nice guy, and I also want to let you people know that, and a lot of times I let people know that, hey, somebody's coming on the show, and... and, and we don't usually get much of an audience. We've got uh, Senator Silverstein right now. Here's our audience. Good but, man. Uh, very good man, as a matter of fact. So uh, he's also going to be on, on uh, next week's show, by the way. So that's one of the, that's the main reason he's here. Besides, he's a good guy. But um, the um, you know, I, it, when people see your name, when I send out the uh, the, the faxes and, and the emails and all that, who's on the show? They say, "Well, why didn't you invite me? I want I, I know him. I like him. He's such a good guy." And like, like everybody seems to, to feel like they know you, they like you, and and like you make everybody feel good. And um, the fact is, I don't hear bad words about you. Even there's something like, and we haven't even talked about this yet. We're more than halfway through in the show. And one of the things you're so famous for, you know, throughout the neighborhood, and the first time we got, I got to meet you and put you on TV is, of course, with the world famous Jesse White Tumblers. Yes, you know, on the Fourth of July, I had the great pleasure of performing. Four times we started out in Highland Park, mm -hmm. Highland Park, uh, Glenview, Glenview to Skokie, from Skokie to the Evanston Parade. And so we were busy that day with uh, five units. Wow. And, you, and, and I believe that I do it as a volunteer because I believe that when you come through this world, you become successful, you have to get back. And we teach our young people that you could be a good athlete, but we also want you to be a good human being. We don't want you to ever dislike anyone because of race, creed, or color. That is the ugliest card in the deck. We also want them to maintain at least a C average in school. We want to put them in a posture by which they can run this great country of ours. And so it's a juvenile delinquency prevention program designed to help young people to grow tall and straight. We've taken them to Tokyo, Japan on three occasions to appear on Nippon Television, to Hong Kong for the Chinese New Year, wow. Bermuda for an international festival, 17 times in Canada, and we've been involved with the making of three movies and 23 commercials. And of course, we here in the state of Illinois, we spend a lot of money, about sixty up to sixty-eight thousand dollars a year to put one person in prison for one year, and eighty-three percent of the people in prison today have not graduated from high school. So it's important for us, we as parents, adults, and leaders, to get behind our young people, to give them the tools that are necessary for them to go, for them to go tall and straight, and to give them an opportunity to see this big, wide, wonderful world out there and to live in peace and harmony with one another. I try to speak about seven different languages, but I believe that if you could speak someone else's language eat their food, learn their dance, and learn about their culture, it makes for a good relationship. Yeah, it and does. as they say in Spanish and Italian, la familia, that means the family. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Well, the fact is, when there's, there's big Jewish festivals around here, too, you're always participating. Well, good lots, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See? <laughs> la fa that's, I guess, our version of la familia. La familia, that's right. <laughs> as opposed to the Sopranos version. That's right. <laughs> But the fact is, it, it's, you know, whether whether it's Lubavitch on, like, Omer or whether it was uh, when, when we used to have a taste of the 50th. Uh, I remember that. You know, used to be out in Warren Park, and that, that's where I was first filming you and all that. And it's like, I never saw the Tumbas before live. It was just amazing. I mean, you, 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 the, your kids are really skilled. I mean, it's, it's precision, too. It's really remarkable what they're able to do. Thank you. Well, we've, uh, last year we did 1,060 shows with uh, five units. Uh, periodically, we'll use six units, and we expect to do about 1,500 shows this year. 
Um, wow. We've, uh, we're have we part of the fact, too, that uh, you know, we use the Moody Bible Institute on the north side and Ada Park on the south side as our training locations. Uh, we have 205 young people on the team. We have 300 in training. And we just want to make sure that these young people are using their idle time in a positive way. And I believe we're going to get a better product as a result of it. I don't think there's any question. In the, in, all your kids are gentlemen. You see the way they, they act toward people. They have man. That's another thing about you that I'm not used to with uh, a lot of elected. You have manners. You have decency. I mean, you're, you're, you're a really you know, positive person, and I think you're a great role model for everybody in the way you conduct yourself. Well, when you realize the fact that uh, someone helped me along the path, uh, George, George Dunn, the former president of the county board, is a person who took care of me um, when I was in college. I was a physical education major. I was a gymnast early on. I was a basketball and baseball player as well. And every year when I'd come back from uh, summer vacation from school, I was always given an, an opportunity to practice my skills uh, in the area of physical education for the Park District. And then I signed a contract after I'd completed my four years of college. As a matter of fact, Dr. King was my minister when I was at Alabama State College. Oh, wow. And former Mayor Eugene Sawyer and I lived in the same dormitory. Oh, wow. So after I'd com completed my college, my, I was in my senior year, actually, I was given an opportunity to sign a contract to play baseball for the Cubs. Four days before going to spring training in March of 57, so going to spring training, I was ended up going to basic training. I was drafted into the military. Ooh. <laughs> and uh, so I completed my tour of duty. Well, there's a little bit more to it than that. Uh, I wanted to learn how to jump out of a perfect good airplane. Mm -hmm. So I went to jump school and earned my wings, and I served with Joe Weir Westmoreland uh, with the 101st Airborne Division. Mm -hmm. And then after I had completed my tour of duty, I began my baseball career. During the off-season, I taught school during the day, worked for the park district at night. Oh, wow. I was asked to pull on the gym show. From the one gym show in December 1959 came the Jesse White Tumbling Team. Oh, wow. So over 47 years old as we speak. That's terrific, and congratulations. Thank you. Wow, you're actually, uh, first of all, you, you did deserve, deserve congratulations for that. And we're talking 1,500 shows this year. Right, but now, you know, most people didn't know that I, I was a gymnast and that I had gotten some on-the-job experience. I learned early on, and then I was a physical education teacher, taught that for 26 know. years at the Schiller Elementary School. Really? Where is that? Yeah. In Cabrini Green School I graduated from. Oh, wow. And in five years at Jenner, and I was an administrator for the Board of Education for for two years. Now, weren't the, the original tumblers were from the Cabrini Green area? No, the original mistaken. tumblers oh. uh, were at the Rockwell Garden. Oh, okay. Housing project at Western Adams. Yeah. That's when I, I worked there, and then later on moved over to Stan Schiller Park. Yeah. So wow, I mean, no, I didn't know I didn't know any of this stuff. I did know you were a minor league baseball player. You were in the Cubs chain. Yeah, played the Triple A baseball primarily. Which is pretty good for those people that don't know. That's the next step. The uh... hard beat, hard beat away. I played uh, uh, at Salt Lake City for two years. Tacoma, mm. Dallas, San Antonio. Pacific Coast League. Or? Yeah, Pacific Coast League. I played for Phil Cavaretta. I guess you remember him. You yeah, Phil Cavaretta. Well, I actually, I'm um, well. I know who he is. Let's put it that way. Yeah. He was a first baseman. He was there in the 40s and the right. 50s. He played for. He had about 2,000 hits. Yes, he played for Lane Tech and then later uh, yeah. became a major league baseball player, and then became a coach. Uh, Pete Reeser, he's a fellow who used to... Yeah, Pistol uh, Pete Reeser. Yeah, he used to led the crash, crash, crash through the, the walls. Yeah, led the league in batting one year. That's right. <laughs> and then uh, Rip Collins, uh, Roger Hornsby was one of my batting coaches. Wow. Uh, 358 lifetime batting average. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And then, then I played with... Uh, uh, I played against Ferguson Jenkins. Randy, one of my all-time favorites. Randy Hundley, Glenn Beckard... Um, Kenny Hubbs, yeah. uh, Dave Kessinger, the list goes on and on. Wow. Even Joe Torrey, the manager of the Yankees, used to play ball against him. Yeah, now uh, tell people what position you played. Center field. Okay. I used to be fast. I'm in the twilight of my career right now. <laughs> <laughs> that I can't say. I, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a tall guy. People don't see it on the air, but I'm six foot four. But I, I've got, the, to use today's phraseology, I have the speed and hops of a block of granite. <laughs> 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 you have a good heart and a good, and a good spirit. Well, thank you, and um, uh, you're su surpassed by yours, by the way. With the stuff you're doing for society, I think is absolutely fantastic. It really is, because you know, like you're you're just you, you've helped so many people throughout the course. I just think it's fantastic. Well, I, I learned from a fellow by the name of Abraham Lincoln Maravich, the former uh, justice. Mm. He swore me in twice when mm. I was a Cook County Record of Deeds. They want to know who do you want to swear you in. I said Judge Abraham Lincoln Maravich. He taught me one thing. That, they taught me a lot. But he taught me that 
every day you have to do something good for someone. And never let a day pass you by. And I, I always remember that. Yeah. He's, I only got to meet him once, but he's an, he was an extraordinarily impressive individual. Wonderful, wonderful human yeah. being. Wonderful man. Now, now, there's something else I want to share with you sure. that we're doing in the office. We're in the process now of doing a dry run on a program that will help speed the delivery of your sticker for your license plates forward. It's called a kiosk machine. We're going to put it in supermarkets, the banks, and in the malls. And while you are out shopping with your wife or your girlfriend, you pull out this piece of paper that you got from the Secretary of State, State's Office to renewal for your license plate. You go over to the machine. Excuse me. They're about, you put it into the machine. You take out your bank card and put it in. It'll cost you an additional dollar seventy-five if if you want to use mm -hmm. that system. Otherwise, you can use the phone. You can tell the phone, or you can go on the on the internet, or go into a currency exchange, or go to one of our facilities. But if you're out shopping, you want to right away, you can use that system. Wow! And in about three minutes, you can just stick it, you peel it off, put it on your license plates. That's great. I mean, that's a real convenience. I know myself that the last time I had to renew my license. And this is before I actually interviewed you, you about any of this stuff, too. So I, I, for whatever reason, I have a good driving record. I guess I've been lucky. So uh, I, I didn't have to go anywhere special for, um, you know, I, I did have to have my eyes examined. But oh, because sure. I had a good record, um, I was able to go to the express service, um, sort of part of the underground in the state of Illinois building. At the 69 West Washington. And um, I was, in, you know, compared to, to having to go to Elston Avenue or wherever else and waiting hours and hours because uh, of the crowds. It's like, you know, I was in and out and uh, so quickly. It was wonderful. Well, you know, we, uh, one of the things that we've done, too, and that is I took the tumblers to Tokyo, Japan, and I learned early on while I was there that they have special seating for senior citizens. And so when I came back to Chicago, I realized that the Secretary of State's office was lacking in that department. Mm -hmm. And that was under the direction of leadership of George Ryan. And so I said, well, if I become the Secretary of State, I'm going to do something about it. Well, as it turned out, we now have a program whereby if you're a senior citizen, a pregnant woman, or a disabled, or a disabled individual, when you come to one of our facilities, you will be treated first, which means that you will be serviced first. Wow, that's great, I think. I yeah. really do. And can you imagine a person on crutches, on a cane? Oh, having to wait. Or, or, or if you're an older person, yeah. and you have to stand in a line. Plus, we've also put chairs in our facilities, and that was not always the case. You know, on a, on a, on a, I know on a slow day on Elston, I used to drive out to the suburbs to avoid Elston. I mean, this is way before your rain. But um, as a matter of I've got a slightly different... Well, you know what? I, we're... we're um, we won't talk about my stuff. We're getting getting near the end of things, but uh, I, I think that's terrific that that you're able to service these people first, and I think that's wonderful. We also have a queuing system now, where you, when you come into our facilities, there are a series of lights. Mm -hmm. There's a concierge who will meet you and find out the nature of your bu your business, and he will give you a number, and all you have to do is look at the numbers and listen, and they'll have you in and out of our facility and nothing flat. When I first came into office, you had to, it could spend up to four hours in that office. But now, if you're there for everything, 35 to 45 minutes, you're in there a little bit too long. Um, we used to turn back your license plates uh, nine weeks later. We yeah. turned them back but within about 15-day period of time. That's great. I used to get back your uh, title, your automobile, uh, nine weeks later. Yeah. You get them back between three to eight days. And so we're proud of the fact that we're speeding forward the delivery of services to the people of the state of Illinois. And so that's why I have only one aim in mind, and that is to work hard toward uh, being a good servant, being a good steward in the office of the Secretary of State. And I want to wish you luck. We're getting near the end of time. I want to thank very much our special guest today, Secretary of State Jesse White. I also want to thank um, one of the truly classy PR people in Illinois or anywhere, Dave Drucker, for his help in this and for being here today. I want to thank my entire technical crew, Sonny Hirsch. And I don't want to get kicked off the air, so I'm your host, Davi Myers. Thanks so much, everybody, and bye-bye. <laughs> thank you, partner. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Nice to see you. My pleasure. Yeah.